and welcome back to Wuhan and the climax of the Wuhan Open snooker. Judd Trump and Ali Carter have negotiated the field this week and they will contest the title match today over the best of 19 frames. It's the first to 10 to be crowned champion and pick up that cool check for £140,000. This is the head-to-head, -head, a very tight rivalry between this pair. Carter just edging it, five victories to four. And the most recent meeting came earlier this year, last season, which Carter won in the Players' Championship in a decider. Trump's most recent win over Carter, the Turkish Masters, last year, which, of course, he went on to win. Packed house once again here in Wuhan. The crowds have been great all week. Sheng Wei Li, big moment for him as well, officiating this final. And his opponent, 24 ranking titles, 2019 World Championship winner, 2023 Newly England Open champion, the AC in the pack, a big introduction for Judd Trump and well merited. What a role of form he's on at the moment, having won the English Open in Brentwood in Essex last week. And we wondered how he'd rock up here in Wuhan with the jet lag and everything that goes with the travelling over to China with such a short turnaround. Well, here he is in the final. He has answered those questions emphatically. It's been in great form. That is the trophy that they're playing for, along with that £140,000 first prize. It's Judd Trump against Ali Carter for the Wuhan Open snooker title, the fifth-ranking event of this new season. Ten frames is the magic number to be crowned champion. Nine in this session. And Judd Trump will get us underway. Slight delay, not quite sure why, but I'm sure we'll be underway very shortly. Thank you. First frame, Judge Trump to break. We're ready to go. Terrific crowd, great atmosphere, and a great day snooker ahead of us, Fergal O'Brien. Thank you, Philip. Yeah, really looking forward to it. Two proven winners, more or less playing at the peak of their game. Well, for Ali Carter, it's been a pretty dramatic return to form, having fallen out of the top 16 for a while. Well and truly back in it now, after winning his first ranking title for more than seven years at the German Masters last season, beat Tom Ford in the final at the Temple Drum in Berlin. Made the Players' Championship final, where he lost to Murphy. Semi-finalist in Leicester at the WST Classic, so... He amassed a very sizable number of points, which have got him back in the game's elite again. Well, that's a lovely opening red from Trump, and that's, I think, an area of his game that maybe went missing a bit last season when he didn't win a ranking title, but is back this season. At his best, so deadly from long range. And back in the winner's enclosure after his triumph last week for his second English Open title. It had been 19 months since he won a ranking event. Of course, he won the Masters last season, but Eight. he just seems to have that old confidence back again. Nine. Here you think Ali slightly has the tactical advantage. It'll just be interesting today to see, is the safety good enough to nullify the threat of Judd's long potting. Fourteen. Both players played very well yesterday in their semi-finals, scored a lot heavier than maybe they had been in previous matches. And I definitely think the new cloth going on 50. after the quarter-finals contributed to that. The table look, definitely looks to be more responsive.
Judd Trump spoiled the birthday party for 20 year old Wu Yiza. His all round game was outstanding, a couple of centuries. Once again, the long potting was very reliable and he punished his opponent's mistakes. Wu, of course, was playing in his first ever ranking semi final, a big occasion for him, and ultimately he was overwhelmed by the excellence of Trump. And it was equally emphatic, really, as Fergal has alluded to for Ali Carter against Liu Hao Shan, the man who, of course, had knocked out Ronnie O'Sullivan in the previous round. Big upset. And won easily, really. 5 1. But Carter so came through from 2 all at the interval after a very scrappy fourth frame with four big breaks for a 6 2 win. So both players feeling great coming into this final. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. a great angle on the black there tried to generate some power would have been hoping for something a little bit easier than this desperate to try and put something to continue the break of course yesterday started with a century he'd love to do that again today the chump 46 So the break ends at 46. Plenty there, though, for Carter. Carter at 44 years of age, the older man by 10 years. First term pro in 1996. Judd Trump appearing in his 40th ranking final and going for his 25th title, which would tie him up with Mark Williams, who won the British Open a couple of weeks ago and opted not to play here in Wuhan. Understandably, given that I think he was mentally spent after winning that title and then rocking up at the English Open. But for Trump, I think he's running off pure adrenaline and enjoyment right now. Back in the winner's enclosure. And just wants to keep playing while he's performing as well as he is. That tends to render irrelevant any feelings of fatigue. He can relax a bit after today's final, and he'll hope he'll be doing it with the trophy in his hand. But he's going to have a tough battle to make it happen. Judd the last week or so, he's looked very at ease, not just with his game, but also with himself. Of course, it's a lot easier to feel good about yourself when you're getting results. But definitely a lot more confidence in his game. Last year, you got a sense of frustration from him that he just wasn't playing as well as he would have liked. And also was unsure why he wasn't playing as well as he would have liked. So he addressed that during the summer. Put a lot of work in, and again, the first term of the season, even in Germany, he got to the final, so already he's had three finals. And to win back to back tournaments, obviously very difficult, made more difficult if you then have to travel from the UK to China to do it. And if he was to win, again, give him another massive boost for the rest of the season. He's also looking to make 
back-to-back -back successes in ranking events here in China, having won the last time we were here in a ranking event, the World Open, way back in 2019, before the pandemic prevented snooker in Asia. Beat Tepchaira Nu for that title. His fifth ranking event success in China. Yeah, couldn't play that red as a shot to nothing. In trying to pot it, he'd well almost certainly hit one of the two reds on the left-hand side. He's played a bit thicker, trying to guarantee a safety. These kind of exchanges are going to be critical during the match. Both attacking players, both heavy scorers when they're in. It just makes the safety play even more important. Certainly more fearful when you're playing Judd. If you have left a long pot, you certainly expect Judd to pot it. There's some long pots that Judd would go for that Ali would refuse and rather try and play a percentage and play a good safety. Has left choice of shot to nothing. There's a, the one beside the pink and also even the one just behind, which is a little bit thinner. For my money, Trump is the best in the business at podding balls like that. The thin clips from the Bork area into the corner pockets. He gets such a high percentage of shots like that. Could be a frame winner. He had quite telling as well the way he played it. Not just that he went for it, but he played out of pace to play position for the green. Whereas normally, a lot of time he'd play a lot harder. He put a lot more emphasis on the pot, which is a sign of his confidence rather than the safety aspect. Both great players, you probably expect it will be very close. However, you do feel if one player was going to potentially run away with it, I think you think it's more likely for Judd to do it with his game and also his confidence at the moment. He will have to work hard for those chances. He made that point himself after his victory over Wu Yuzi yesterday that in playing Carter, he likened him to Barry Hawkins insofar as you've got to earn everything you get on the table. Nothing's going to be given to you. Hunt. Carter, such a solid all-round performer. Hunt your one. And he's been scoring heavily recently. And getting back into the top 16, he made the equal high break this week of 145 with Aaron Hill. The acknowledgement that this frame is done, barring snookers, but Judd Trump will be looking to keep Carter in his chair for the rest of this frame. And it's been a very positive start. Got in with the long red. And at his second scoring visit, has finished the job. Thirty-six. Both players proven winners. They're going to be relishing playing today. There's no danger of either player going into their shell or feeling uncomfortable. It will be just a case of of the of the long day. Who plays the best? Fifty-one. 
He's looking very sharp again. He was wowing the crowd yesterday. Penultimate frame of the match. He was potting the final few colours without moving his feet. Left, right-handed, you name it. Yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, crowd, of course, loved that. And Judd has spoken about the fact that he likes to be loved, likes to entertain, likes having the crowd on his side. And I would say with the exception of O'Sullivan, of course, probably the most popular player amongst the crowds, certainly to watch. Six to seven. Really a sense of anticipation Six when the frame five. is won. You feel he will play some amazing shots, exhibition shots. Seven to two. Quite enough there to add to his season tally of 30 centuries already. But what a start from Judd Trump. A break of 72 after the initial 46. Ali Carter breaks off in frame two of a possible 19. It's the Wuhan Open snooker final. Judd Trump monopolising the table in the opening frame. Breaks of 46 and 72. Got in with a great long red and then another good red from distance. Clipped into the... Right corner pocket, he looks sharp, picking up where he left off against Wu Yiza yesterday. That tally of 30 centuries already this season is pretty impressive, isn't it? His nearest rival, Mark Williams, not here, of course, has made 21. 931 now for Trump's career. Only John Higgins and, of course, Ronnie O'Sullivan ahead of him in the all-time list. And Trump turned pro 13 years after... Those class of 92 greats. But as mentioned, Carter's been scoring very heavily of late. Yeah, over the course of a season, you'd probably be looking to find 10 players, really, that have more than 30 centuries. So to have already done it in mid-October is phenomenal. But again, if he keeps at that rate, he might have over 100 centuries again, which, of course, only him and Neil Robinson have done, which is... Phenomenal achievement. Oh, that's a lovely pot. Really good. That's a real confidence booster early in the final to knock one in like that. Yeah, even though it's very early in the final, there would have been a bit of pressure on that. Would have been fearful if you missed of letting Judd in again. Carter has made three centuries this week, but more significantly than that, he's been taking out frames in one visit on a regular basis, as he did Eight. against Liu Hao Shan in the semi finals. Both of these players riding high in the one-year ranking list. Judd Trump has overtaken Mark Williams this week at the top of the tree. Ali Carter is up to fourth place in that regard, having already bagged 63,000 points for getting to the final. If he wins today, he'll be up to second place. And of course, that has big positive implications with the World Grand Prix Players' Championship and the Tour Championship in mind.
19. Thank you. Played that well, managed to play it slow enough. Marlon's in perfect position now on the black to stun up to the pack. Okay, just let the white get away. Needs to be a little bit lower on the white, stun up. Just glance the red as opposed to full ball contact. Be a little bit frustrated there from where he was. Is that more or less an ideal position? He'll know when he gets these chances in amongst them the importance of trying to win the frame in one visit. Well, he started this break with a terrific long red, and here's another one to keep it going, right in the centre of the pocket. Yeah, another time he might have been tempted just to settle for a good safety shot. He probably feels these chances it's going to maximise. It's a fine line between being positive and aggressive and not being Sorry. reckless and careless. It's a fine line you might have to walk throughout the day. Doesn't want to be seen to take a backward step against Judd. Again, has a very good record against Judd, beaten him many times. Yes, they're no stranger to big time meetings either. Judd Trump beat Carter for the World Grand Prix final back in 2019. That was a 10-6 win for Trump, but of course they also met in the World Championship in round two back in 2012. That was quite a spiky affair. Carter coming from three down with four to play to win it. So, well used to facing each other on the big occasion, none bigger than a lucrative final here in China. This time going into the pack a little bit lower on the white than he would have liked. I was looking to stun, end up screwing off slightly. Just looking at this plant. See what would have to be made. Cutting this red. Just really focus just totally on, on potting it. 47. Just had to focus on putting it and let the white run its natural course. And you can see that little raise of the hand there. Obviously, feels he's a little bit fortunate. He's on this yellow wooden angle to get back down. It's a great game, Ali all round. Great match player. Lovely cue action. Then with Ali, always feel the key for him playing his best is his temperament. Probably been his Achilles heel too many times over the years. He's got frustrated and reacted to things that were generally out of his control. This is a tester, not straightforward. Mid range red, frame still not one. And it goes though. Yeah, as soon as he struck the white, he was up and on the move. And again, when he's playing well, Ali I said the other day, not quite the Sean Murphy stomp, but definitely a, a bounce going around the table. The 
last year or so back working with Chris Henry and that's certainly something they've been working on is Ali's temperament trying to be a little bit more calm and again when he is calm and folks like this he's a handful for anyone could win any tournament He certainly got happy memories of playing in China. He won the Shanghai Masters back in 2010. And the World Open in Yushan in 2016 when he beat Joe Perry 10-8. And that was his most recent ranking triumph before he lifted the trophy at the Temple Drum in Berlin last season. It was a long time coming, but all the sweeter for that. And this has been some break, the initial red to get in and then another great long red to stay in. And now just needs this red to clinch the frame. Precisely the response Carter would have looked for after Trump dominated the first frame. And what a start to this final. Yeah, it's set up beautifully this final. Both players top of their game, full of confidence. Not a kind of match you'd be able to fudge your way over the line. You're going to have to play very well. Maximize any chance you get. One visit snooker has been the order of the day for these two this week Eight. and more of the same at the start of the title match it's been noticeable as well this week hasn't been any mention at all about the conditions the tables are obviously playing lovely particularly now with the new cloth from the semi-finals whereas in Shang Shanghai usually that time of year can be quite humid and players were ha having to talk about adapt having to adapt to the conditions. That hasn't been the case here, and I think we've seen that in the standard of play and certainly in the break building. Terrific stuff. Century number four of the week for Carter. 389 for his career. Closing in on becoming just the 17th player in professional snooker history to make 400 or more centuries. He's missed the yellow, but it doesn't matter. The damage well and truly done. What a break that was. Brilliant opening red to get in. Another one to keep the break going. And Carter responding in style to Trump's opening salvo. It's one frame all. Back underway then. This is their 10th meeting, remember. Carter leads 5-4. to four. Their second meeting in a final. Trump winning their only previous title match, the World Grand Prix in 2019, 10-6. Carter winning most recently at the Players' Championship last season on his way to the final, 6-5. Good safety shot there for Mali. Had to hit the reds quite thick to avoid the red on the left-hand side. we got enough pace on it. Come off the cushion, got a little bit of cover behind the green. Anything short there, he would have left Judd that long red. Again, we've been talking about Ali's temperament and it's been excellent this week. But again, what has happened in the last two frames will certainly test that. The 15-minute interval was important, gives him every chance to deal with it, accept it, and then come out with a clear mind.
Yes, and there's plenty of room to manoeuvre because this is the first to ten, not the first to five or six, although he won't be thrilled with that one. Remember, he was three down with four to play against Stuart Bingham this week and came through with a four-frame burst. But Trump with the chance to get back in straight after the interval. Oh, but he's missed. That was a surprise. Yeah, and missing very fortunate to get away with that. And little things like that can add to the frustration as well. Not for a second you want to be thinking it's not your day. You can easily start feeling a little bit sorry for yourself. Predicting problems. Very difficult sometimes, isn't it, with this game to have a glass half full outlook. And if you were taking a more positive view, you'd be saying, well, could have made a big break in the event. Nil nil in this frame rather than he could have left me in. Yeah. Both of which. Absolutely, yeah. It's a lot easier to have that clear, logical thinking in the commentary box than when you're. But that's exactly what is required. Great pot. Yeah, had to get it as it turned out. I think he thought him potting it. He'd avoid the other reds and was playing it as a shot to nothing. I think if he was convinced he was going to hit other reds, he wouldn't have played it. And just taking his time, might be tempted with the blue. It's a difficult pot. And again, if he misses, he's leaving his opponent in. This is a big shot. Excellent. There was a lot riding on that, given the way this final has gone so far. Had he missed, he was leaving the world for Trump, but he's got it right in the heart of the pocket. So two outstanding pots from Carter to get himself in. In his bid to do some damage and close the gap to one frame. Yeah, they're very good signs, actually, for Mali there. Assessed the table. Seven. Decided to go for the blue. Fully committed to it and struck it very well. Yeah, yeah fair play. Just confessed a foul on himself, touching the red. Yeah. Excellent sportsmanship acknowledged by Trump, but further frustration for Carter, having done quite superbly to engineer that opportunity. Yeah, because I didn't, and certainly the referee didn't either see that. And again, instinctively, as soon as he made contact, he was up to notify the referee. Take it for granted in snooker, but it's still... Not that common in other sports. Whoa. Again, there'd be no consolation to him if Judd went on and made a break. Again, after putting that great blue, it was an opportunity he had created. I don't think Ali will be expecting any Seven. gifts from Judd either. Eight. Judd would be delighted, obviously, with three went up. Hasn't played his very best. 
probably just say he's made less mistakes than Ali. Probably been a little bit more clinical. And as the final goes on, particularly if you have a lead, more likely to find his groove. Fourteen. Joe, the prolific winner. You feel as the final goes on. Inside of the winning line, he's more likely to sprint over it. He's not going to start missing regularly and come back to Ali. Ali's going to have to play a better calibre of snooker in all departments to come back. Well, this certainly has been a test of Carter's patience so far this final. First missing the red in frame three when he was looking good to lead 2-1. They're missing the blue in the fourth frame before the interval, which they allow Trump in for a 3-1 lead. And then having knocked in such a good long red and an even more impressive blue, which carried a lot of pressure knowing that he was leaving Trump bang in if he missed he got it only to then inadvertently touch a red under his body as he was queuing for that pink immediately owned up to it Trump tapping the table in acknowledgement of the great sportsmanship but now looking to really rub salt into Carter's wound and pull 4-1 clear Fifteen. Fifty-one. Fifty head puts us back fifty-seven. We'll just need one more red and colour. Looks to have landed straight on the black. This was a result just settled for all it in. And if he just rolls this red in, not only would he 58. pot it be 58 ahead, obviously should be perfect on the black. Jack Chum, 58. Break of 58, but... Yeah, played it with an element of safety, that if he did miss it, he had a cover behind the black, but always makes the pot just a little bit more difficult. You're playing with a little bit more pace. Requires it to be a little bit more accurate. Fifty-seven Trump's lead. Still sixty-seven on the table.
foul and I miss. Ali got a four. Just trying to just swerve around, make contact on that red closest to the black. And misjudged the swerve, the reaction of the white. Have to aim a little bit further away from the yellow. And then the swerve will take effect. We're just looking just to hit the red and not leave a pot on. With the four reds on the left hand side, somewhat safe. Doesn't want to be playing off any of them and try and develop them into a better position for Ali. Just checking with the referee that the white ball is back in the correct position. Overcompensated there with the swerve. Caught the red on the other side than the one he wanted. So after all the frustrations of the last two or three frames, can Ali Carter ultimately have the final say in this fifth one, having owned up to the foul when he was in earlier? There's still enough. There's plenty to do, of course. The Reds are awkward at the moment. But it would be a real shot in the arm if he could win this frame, given the circumstances. Nice positional shot there to get on this red. It's quite a small margin of error to be perfect on it. And of course, I'm putting this, freeze that other red. Six. Possibility from the pink here and playing it to try and get over to the left hand side cushion. If you land in an area, you feel with those two reds, you'd have some shot on one of the reds into one of the pockets. Played that well, didn't have a lot of angle. Was able to generate a lot of power. Top left hand running side. Casey played it at, and probably still the newness of the cloth helped. Wasn't the most accurate of strikes, but gave the red every chance of dropping. Again, he's just looking at stunning over to an area between the two reds. Thank 
Carter was up quite quickly off that shot. I think he knew it was always going to be just a little wide of the mark, but at least it's run safe. He's back in the frame, 34 the difference, with 43 now remaining. Clever shot there from Judd. Using the blue as cover on one red, and pink or black on the other. They yeah, wanted to get right behind that red off the side cushion to push the red away. And now a guilt edge chance for Trump to extend his lead. To red in the colour. Well, Trump's not playing his A game at the moment, but things are conspiring against Ali Carter. Trouble started in that third frame when he missed a red into this left corner. He was looking good for 2-1. And obviously, early in this frame, inadvertently catching the red when he was playing the pink after getting in with a couple of outstanding pots. And eventually, Judd Trump, even though he didn't kill it off at the first attempt, has done so now. It was from that exact position yesterday. He cleared the colours without moving his feet. Might try to do it again. Yeah, he is all right. Twenty-eight. Another eventful frame, but another frame that has gone Judd Trump's way after Ali Carter was in, but confessed the foul. And ultimately, Trump has been a real test of patience at the moment, this final for Ali Carter. Judd Trump hasn't pulled up any trees after dominating the opening frame, but he's been able to pick up the pieces. One or two errors from Carter, but also... The misfortune early in the previous frame, having got in so impressively to touch a red when he was potting the pink, immediately owned up to it. But ultimately, that's of no consolation to him. He's lost the frame. He's 4-1 down. There are still four more to come in this first session, so still plenty of time to get himself back in contention. But Trump will be delighted with the scoreline right now because he hasn't quite found his A game as yet and yet he's won four of the five frames he's only dropped six in the tournament since he arrived here in Wuhan well. yeah not the best break off from Ali either previous break he brought a red up down already doesn't want to be given Judd opportunities particularly if he hasn't had to work for them that could very quickly just slip away even if he shares the next four frames Ali he'd be 6-3 down coming into tonight's session you feel anything worse than that 
more or less no chance. Again, ideally he'd like to get it close to 5-4 either way, but he mightn't have that opportunity. And the other side is every chance Judd could have a bigger lead. That's what he'd be looking for. Again, you just can't afford at this level to be leaving your opponent a red from the break off. Twelve. Modern game, everybody's looking to improve, working with different people. But again, the first and probably easiest way to improve for all players. If you could, if you could guarantee you don't leave your opponent a red from the break off. Once again, though, Trump not immune to an error himself. Now, can Ali Carter turn this into something tangible? Yeah, that's a big let off. Had a big opportunity for Ali. Fourteen. Of course, over the years, Ali has shown a lot of heart, character on and off the table. Again, he's not going to be giving in at all here. Type of player that may be beaten, but never going to be bullied. Just be a bit frustrating from today. He's had chances. Could easily be ahead. Yeah, when he played the previous red, would have looked to have been a little bit closer to the black and with a better angle. Looks a bit bemused there as how he's missed the pack altogether. Again, yeah, would have to go down as another missed opportunity. Unless he can pull out another great pot. to keep putting those difficult ones. Oh, hang on. And and a little bit of kick off the yellow. Well, maybe, <laughs> maybe he's earned that. Just shaved the yellow, and that took the red on its path to the pocket. Now, will that prove to be a significant fluke? Only if Carter can go on to make something substantial here, get himself back in the final at 4-2. Trump wins this frame and he's guaranteed to be in front going into the final session, but would have the chance then to build a commanding lead, perhaps an unassailable one. Yeah, I thought on potting that yellow, he just clipped the red. He went past. 
and just taking a second or two to weigh up his options. Yeah, excellent pot there. Judged it well. Slight element of safety in it. If he had a miss at the pack, would have covered it. So they won. And just looking at maybe playing this red down to this left corner. Play with course with an element of safety in it. Ali Carter, so they won. Yeah, that's what he thinks of it. Heaven yeah. would stir. It's just not happening for Carter at the moment. The fluke not proving to be very significant. Yeah, poor shot there from Ali, really. It kind of fell between two stools there. Instead of just playing as a red to try and pot it and get control. Got seduced and into trying to get onto the brown as well. Eight. Yeah, and he missed the red by so far, came back down the table. And you could see when he was got to his chair how annoyed he was. I think his frustration will be compounded by the fact that Trump isn't really firing himself at the moment in this match. But at the moment, the Trump, eight. he's in charge of it. Another mistake. Does the red go? Cue that very well, especially when you consider the little extension piece on the butt of the queue. And again, you feel if you're putting the black, if you can disturb the two reds to the right. If you can play, disturb the, either of those two reds. The red then at the bottom of the three would go into the other pocket. Perfectly. Eight. Nine. Well, it's been another quite scrappy frame, but Carter won't care a jot about that as long as he wins it, gets himself back in contention.
Won the first of his five ranking titles back in 2009 when he beat Joe Swale in Newport for the Welsh Open. Two of his other four titles have come here in China. Shanghai and Yu Shan when he won the World Open in 2016. Last season he won his second German Masters title. 25. And when you consider the injury, or rather health issues, I should say, that he's had to grapple with down the years, the Crohn's disease, which he still has to manage, a couple of bouts of cancer. He's shown remarkable resilience. 32. So, Carter gets his second frame in the nick of time, really. When he left Trump in earlier in this one and looked to the heavens, he was staring at a possible 5-1 deficit, and then you're into damage limitation territory in this first session. As it is, just two behind now with three still to play. Yeah, despite those health issues over the year, years, Ali, he's had a great career. You feel if he could win one of the Triple Crown events that just legitimise it even more. It's obviously been very close. Lost two World Finals to Ronnie and then also a Masters Final. Still has plenty of time. The green doesn't matter. Carter has pulled the frame back. Frame seven just underway with Ali Carter having, crucially from his point of view, got a frame on the board. It wasn't pretty, but at this stage of the final, it doesn't matter. It's about staying in the hunt. 5-1 down, and the lead begins to become rather precarious. But 4-2 with three frames still to come in this first session. And he could yet emerge with a session lead. I think if he was 5-4 down at the end of this one, he'd take it from here for sure, because he's not played his best snooker. Neither has Trump. And from Trump's point of view, maybe he feels that he's missed one or two opportunities himself to be even further in front. Carter made the century in frame two. <coughs> Since then, quite a few errors from both players, but Trump at the moment with the advantage. Ali decided to play safety there. He was just afraid of going for the red to the left corner. Because if he missed it, he would have guaranteed to leave the red that was below the black. So again, a good percentage shot there. Percentages were in his favour to play safety. Good return from Judd there, good length. And he's just making sure that when he makes contact with this red and pushes it, that the red doesn't push anything over towards the right corner.
one. There's been nothing wrong with Carter's long potting today. He's knocked in some cracking pots, and there's another one. Yeah, there was no guarantee at all with the position of play, but still a good sign. He was confident that he'd pot it. One. Certainly hasn't turned down much today, Ali. Again, a sign of his confidence. So far, Ali needs to be thinking what's he is for two down. Judd hasn't been playing fantastic either. He has been getting chances. I think before the final, he would expect Judd to probably play better than he has. Trump's highest break of the final remains the 72 he made to clinch the opening frame. Had a chance in the previous one, Mr. Red to the right corner when he could have inflicted even more pain on Carter. 4 2 feels much more like a reflection of the snooker so far than 5 1 would have done. Shaded area denoting the balls that Carter can't hit. Good length and line there from Ali there to get the cover behind the green. He is having a look at the red to left corner, but very risky. Shot to play, just come off the side cushion, just nestle into those reds around the black. It's going to go back, a bit of a stalemate at the moment with the black well and truly surrounded. Reds clogged up on the top cushion. Just a reminder that, of course, our next tournament here on Eurosport is the second leg of the Home Nations, the Northern Ireland Open. It gets underway a week today at the Waterfront Hall in Belfast. We've got the qualifiers prior to that that you can watch on Discovery Plus from Tuesday the 17th through to Friday the 20th. Fergal is involved on Friday. I think there's some tickets left. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it very much. That have been snapped up. You're playing Stephen Maguire. Stephen Maguire, yeah. Who lost on a re-spotted black this week to Wu Yiza. Final frame. Myself and Stephen played in the final back actually in 2007. In the waterfront as well. Here we are here years later, battling out in Sheffield in round one.
He's fouled one, and he's back in. Six. Seven. That's one of the enjoyable things about watching Ali play, is that he does wear his heart on his sleeve. And that bounce around the table has returned. Sign of his growing confidence. Been a little bit more comfortable. And as you said, I think if it's 5-4 either way, he'd be pleased coming into tonight. Of course, the possibility he can have the lead. Definitely room for improvement for both players in tonight's session. Yes, they've both proved time and again this week that their form is very much in evidence. One or two of the frames so far in the final after a very good start. have been a bit scrappy and error strewn, but that's all part of the package when the stakes are as high as they are today. Hasn't been any hesitancy at all in his game, Ali. Even if it's been difficult or tricky shots, be quite decisive, committed to playing it the right way. It's already a very healthy lead given the position of the remaining Reds and how quickly things can turn around when you think that Trump. Had the opportunity for 5 1, Mr. Red to the right corner. Carter was able to scramble his way to a four. Position lost, but 53 in front. Still bags of points there, but a lot of work for Trump to do to get back into this frame, given the position of the balls. Ali Carter, 48. It's a good break of 48. The black was out of commission throughout. As you can see, Judge Trump is snookered on all of those reds. Carter having got in with the plant to the left centre pocket to take control of this seventh frame. And 
now he's got another chance to build on that lead. Possibly clinch the frame at this visit. Yeah, he gave that pink that extra second or two, gave it its full attention, but then totally committed to it and played it lovely. And two more reds should seal the frame for Carter from here. Have the angle just to roll it in, be nicely on the red on the left hand side cushion. And just needs this red, doesn't have to play position. Even if he rolls it in and plays safe, I'd say Judge will probably concede yeah. given where the reds are. You'd need two snookers just to tie if this goes in. So Ali Carter is very much back in the hunt. 4-1 down, looking frustrated. This session could really have got away from him, but he hasn't allowed that frustration to impact his snooker. He's kept plugging away and he's being rewarded. Ali Carter, 15, on the frame. And Judd Trump concedes. So back-to-back -back frames for the captain. <laughs> Threatening takeoff again. Certainly back in contention in this Wuhan Open final. Ali Carter on the comeback trail from 4-1 behind. Now to just 4-3 adrift. He could still emerge from this first session with the lead. Two more frames to come. 10 is the target for the title tonight. And Judd Trump will now feel that he needs a response 4-1 was a somewhat fluttering scoreline, I think, for him. Hadn't entirely convinced with his level of play, and now just one in front, but... It's a terrific red. I'm not sure if he can get to the potting angle of the black, even though he played the cannon. Might be able to turn it over to Tracer right hand side. He plays it slowly. He's overdone it. Yeah, turned it too much. You can actually see there as he walked away. Kind of flicking his wrist. Just flicked it a bit too much. First sign of any emotion from Judd there during the final. Judd deliberately playing safe off this red. Because with the black where it is, it's a big pocket. Maybe every chance you'd leave that on. I'm talking earlier about Ali's frustration, temperament, but also 
test here for Judd. He'll know at 4 1, he was in a very strong position. He'd have been anxious to capitalise on that. Would have been thinking about the possibility of being 6 3 up himself. He still can. But even 5 4 up, he'd probably be slightly disappointed. And certainly, if he was to be behind going in tonight, he'd need those few errors to accept that. And when Ali missed that red on 52 at one all, the match and speed and dynamics of the match has changed. Wouldn't say they've been scrappy frames, but haven't really been as clinical. And it could be that Trump's feeling a little mentally fatigued now. Remember, it's been quite a fortnight for him winning the English Open last Sunday. Flying here to Wuhan, having to play two matches when he did arrive in one day. Certainly hasn't appeared to be tired with the way he's played, but it can catch up with you. He certainly seemed a little bit flat in this session, despite leading 4-1. Both players need to be a little bit careful when they're playing safe. They don't catch the red reds too thick. And if a red goes over towards or, or near the side cushion, as I said, with a black there, you would be able to pot it and off it. Couldn't have got any closer there. Felt sure on its way to the pocket it was going to go in. Played it good though, getting the cover. And I think the smile there indicates, I think they both feel it's inevitable that there's going to be a re-rack. At least giving them the look. <laughs> Yeah, I think they've agreed. Yeah, thank God. With the red over the pocket, there was no way for that frame to be progressed. So we'll start again. Two more frames in this first session. Possible 10 this evening. It's one thing that's changed in the game over the last 20 or year, years or so. Both players far more quicker to look for and accept the re-rack. Yeah, it just makes sense, doesn't it, to try and move the game forward as quickly as possible if it looks like a stalemate, as that certainly did. The Tour of Turkey is continuing live on Eurosport right now at stage eight. Istanbul to Sultanahmet. So we'll try again. Ali Carter breaking off, looking to level this match. And what a result that would be, given he was 4-1 down. He'd inadvertently fouled a red when he was playing the pink in that fifth frame. Everything was going wrong for him at that stage. Trump was just picking up the pieces, really, without playing particularly fluently himself. But Carter's battled his way back. Another great long red from Trump this time. And he's looking to re-establish some fluency in his game. He dominated the first frame, including a break of 72. That's his best to date. including the re-rack, that's now four times in a row. Judd has put a red off Ali's break. Sorry. Hasn't always been very costly, but if that keeps happening, 
there will be times when that first red will result in losing a frame. Again, very frustrating. You're working so hard to get back into a match, winning a frame. Again, from the first shot, you've given your opponent a chance and they may well go on to win the frame. Yeah, and the break off. I think too much emphasis is given to the white ball. I think if you get the correct contact on the end red, those two end reds come away, but also come back in towards the pack. If they get close enough to the pack, it doesn't really matter too much where the white ball is. And the standard these days, even if you do leave the white tight on the cushion behind the green, if there's a red available, there's every chance your opponent's going to pot it. And as I said, not just pot it, they potentially could win the frame. I think Judd Trump's just asking Sheng Wei Li to check that the pink is in the right position. There's no room for it, obviously, on its own spot. So it's got to go in behind the reds in a direct line without touching another ball. Yeah, it still looks a little bit to the, the left. Again, even I think if you use the black spot as a judge, yeah, it's definitely to the left of the black spot. Obviously, the blue, pink, and black on spots should be in a row. References the black spot. Yeah, that's what Judd is arguing. If the pink doesn't go there, it'll go below the red as opposed to above it, and then that red would be available. So it is important. But you clearly see, well, it looks like that, that pink doesn't go. It's too far to the left. Yeah, in theory, it should be in a straight line with its own spot. If not, then it has to go below the red. Anyway, 11. on we go. Where's the red? Where's the red? It's just about hung on, but the cue ball isn't great. 16. Now Trump's got to hide that red. Back-to-back -back re -wrecks. Yeah, I think if he rolls in here, there's every chance that could happen. He's a small enough lead, but I don't think that's enough of a deterrent for a re -rack and Foul. The jump, 16. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he has to replace the cue ball this time, it'll be rather more straightforward than it was earlier in the match when he was replacing a number of balls. I think they're going to have another re-rack here. Oh, no, he says go again. From there. Of course, it was a miss. He could have put him back. <laughs> again, it's just not worth the gamble of trying to block the red. If they hadn't had a re-rack five minutes ago, I think they'd have already had a re-rack here, but... Nobody wants back-to-back re-racks on their resume. <laughs> Even me. It's not always been the most fluent session, this first of the final, but it's certainly been eventful.
Ali just gone down the table to see is there an area or a spot he can leave the white. To block that red. Because even if he can't hit the red directly, if there's room, he'd be able to come off the side cushion, just flick it in. Definitely a bit of a risk or a gamble if he does play it. Because if it's not perfect, guaranteed that Judd would pot the next red. A shake of the head from Carter, suggesting that Trump might be able to get through to this road. Yeah, that's a bad shot. He went down, took the time, he's seen the danger. And still played it. Again, he's fortunate there. More often than not, with Judd with a red over the pocket, would be on a colour. I think just surely the fact that there was a re-rack a couple of minutes ago that kind of prevented Ali from playing what was the right shot. I think both players are feeling a bit frustrated with the way things are unfolding in this final at the moment. There's very little in the way of fluency. Trump might feel as though he should have a bigger lead. Even though he's not played anywhere near his A game in this final to date. Carter just looking to ensure that he's very much in contention when the second session gets underway this evening. Judd deliberately played the red harder to leave Ali this safety shot. It's the end of the stalemate anyway. when there's been so little in the way of fluency. Every shot becomes that bit more difficult. More mistakes tend to creep in. Carter initially asking for the spider, which he's now abandoned, just playing off the pack. Exactly the same issue that they had in the first attempt of this frame. The black being so close to the pocket. 
you push a red too far over. So off the black. Of course, in the last attempt, Judd got so close. It forced the re-rack. He seems to be eyeing this red up as well. Yeah, the black wasn't close enough to the pocket that if you got anywhere close, it was unmissable. Again, he felt it was worth the risk. The pot was guaranteed to be on the black. Problem for Ali here, doesn't have much of an angle and the harder he hits it, the more likely to stay down this black end. Wow. Yeah, that was the problem. Playing with a top spin. We're just going to arc the cue ball and just keep it down here. Or just roll up to the black. Again, he's just having a little look that when he does roll up to the black, chances are he's going to leave Judd some sort of a shot into the middle. Which is always that concerned look on his face. I'd be tempted just to come across and actually try and lie on the pink. Then if he gets the white beside the pink, he won't leave any sort of a chance for Judd. Yeah, that's the better choice. Alicado one. Maybe that red goes. It looks fairly thin, but again, judging by Ali's reaction when he walked away, and the fact Dud's coming around to have a look. So the deadlock broken. Things are still awkward. Pink and black at the moment, far from ideal. Trump looking to get something going in the way of a break. Six. Twelve. Even with the pink and black tied up, we can still win the frame comfortably just using the blue. Again, wasn't able to get high on the blue there, but should be able to come in and out of bog. Eighteen. Played that very well, it was the wrong side of the red. But had enough bottom and right hand side.
to get back into the blue. A loud bang there as Trump was on the point of queuing, so wisely just getting back up off the shot and resetting. From 4 1 up with Carter struggling. Anything other than a session win for Trump would be very frustrating for him. Yeah, B3 clear, which would be a very handy lead. That looks to have gone wrong positionally. Sit. 42 the lead, still 67 on. Nothing doing into the right corner. Jump set. can see from that picture that he's able to pot this red to the left corner. It looks like if he plays it, it's going to come off and naturally hit the other two reds. Not necessarily a bad thing. Probably be on the black. Suddenly the table looking a good deal more open. What a frame this would be for Carter to steal from 4-1 behind to get level at four each. He's still got plenty to do, but the possibility is there for him. This is tricky. It was a good pod on the blue. It's given Carter a chance. Seven. Looking ahead, if you can black here and the two more open reds obviously the last red beside the green but apart from even playing the cannon to try and bring it into play of course if he was to land just behind the pair of them 
and you're guaranteed a snooker. <laughs> Playing a cannon that could go wrong. Fourteen. Fifteen. But did you think the blue would be the best ball if he does decide to cannon the red way? Twenty three. Doesn't really have much of an angle at all. I think he'll just roll it through. Come off the cushion. Twenty eight. Good, hard look there from Ali. Yes, and right back in the frame now. 35 left, Trump snookered. Trump having got in earlier with 30, but having run out of position. Crowd enjoy that one. Judd, not so much. Yeah. Difficult one as well. Okay, I would like to play it normally at pace to try and separate the two balls, but of course, if, if he does that and doesn't hit the red, good chance he could leave a free ball. Try to play it in such a way that he'd prevent leaving a free ball. Ali got a four. Free ball. Free ball confirmed. Because Carter can't hit the outside edge, the left hand side of the red. The yellow is a little awkward. What a frame this would be for Carter to win. Give himself the chance of emerging from this session with a lead, which seemed highly unlikely. When he trailed 4 1, particularly the circumstances in which he found himself in that position. Just had a look there to see exactly where he needs to be. Put the white, the gap between the brown and green for the red. 
Let's be a little bit careful because you could easily snook yourself. Again, played it well. Bit of right hand run inside just to widen the angle to get up the table. You feel the frame's going to be decided by the yellow. Can you get a, can you get in close behind the yellow? Well, Carter had a major result just now in snookering Trump and getting out of the snooker himself. Is it going to result in a four-all scoreline with one frame still to play in this session? This is the key shot coming up. Three in front. Can he get position off this yellow? He can. What a turnaround in this match. Carter has been rewarded for just sticking in there, really. It's been quite attritional since he made the century in frame two. Things started to go wrong when he missed the red in frame three which led to three straight frames for Trump without Trump playing with any great fluency. Just one half century since the 72 he made in the opening frame from Trump. But Carter is battling his way right back into the match. Just the blue required. A very long frame, which, of course, started with a re-rack. We might have had two back-to-back. -back. What we do have is a very tight Wuhan Open final, which is right back in the balance. Ali Carter has won three on the bounce to leave Judd Trump. feel as though Trump could forge a big lead in this first session. It's not panned out that way, and now he's facing the possibility that he could come out of this session behind. But whatever happens in this frame, it's going to be set up perfectly for this evening's conclusion. Possible 10 frames to be played tonight. 10 being the target for the Wuhan Open title. Yeah, fair play to Ali at 4-1. We questioned his temperament and his character, but he responded brilliantly. And I think even if he ends up 5-4 down, you probably feel maybe even the better of the two. And obviously then if he has the lead, he'd be delighted. That little passage of play from 4-1 to 4-all. If he goes on to win the match tonight, I think that's where he might look back as critical. Whereas maybe Judd slightly missed the boat.
kind of pot earlier on in the day that had been putting. The last few frames have been quite scrappy and protracted. Just lost a little bit of fluency. Just makes that putt a little bit more difficult. Yeah, the bang of the chair did, certainly didn't help playing that shot. Trump made 72 in the opening frame, 58 in the fifth. Carter with that sparkling century in frame two. And the 52 break in the third, which of course was the catalyst for his problems in the match. Missing a red on 52 when he was looking good for 2-1. Ended up 4-1 behind, but he's clawed his way back admirably. Foul. Six. <clears throat> Seven. Looks like the perfect angle there now to pot the balloon. I think just miss the pink. Smash into them. Surprising choice, really. Uh, after putts another red or two, might get a better opportunity. Seemed to be perfect there. Thirteen. Again, for that very reason, there's no guarantee you're going to get back into that ideal position. Might just have enough of an angle on the brown to power it in just before the middle pocket and get into the pack. And whilst that shot was on, it was nowhere near as easy as the shot he had a couple of moments ago when he was perfect on the blue. <clears throat> Rare, I'd get a chance to criticize Judd's break building prowess, but I think in that instance he missed a trick. Yes, it's been bits and bobs really for most of this session. Just the one half century from Trump, other than the opening 72, which won in the first frame. Very little in the way of fluency.
Oh, he's had a big stroke of luck there. The cannon on the yellow, leaving Carter. Bang behind the brown with a red over the pocket. It's not just that he got away with leaving an easy pot. It's difficult now for Ali to do something and not leave a red, and particularly that red on. Oh, it's an excellent shot. It really was, because he would have been feeling hard done by there. But once again, he kept his counsel. And he's come up with an excellent shot to dig himself out of that hole. Yeah, of course, it's still possible Judd might pot a red, but I mean, in Ali's position, he couldn't have done any more. Sometimes you have to just have to accept you're in trouble. And if you leave your opponent to pot, and he gets it. This is tough. To do. Ali got his reward then for that extra patience and discipline to find a shot and executed it very well. I think he can get past the green to play a thin clip on this red to the corner. And again, yeah, a little <laughs> bit of luck there, Ali. Both players at times riding their luck in this session. Perhaps not as fluent as one might have expected given the way they've been scoring coming into the final, but thoroughly absorbing nonetheless. This evening's deciding session could be very different, of course. They might both start to fire in the break building stakes again right now they're just jostling for position to see who emerges with the slender lead for Carter this frame would feel like a bonus really from 4-1 down he would certainly have taken a 5-4 deficit the way things were going Yeah, well played safety there from Judd, which Ali appreciated. Could have went wrong. Got a good contact on the red. Got good length as well. I think he's looking at trying to play it, obviously trying to go for the pop, but his priority is to get low on the cue ball and screw the white back into bulk. <clears throat> that red could have gone anywhere, unfortunately for Carter. It's landed over the right centre pocket. 
another chance for Trump to try and finish this quite challenging session on a high. It's pretty thin, this red, though. That's the problem, having any control over the cue ball. Yeah, that little roll of the eyes from Joe, that probably makes it a bit thinner than even it looks. And all he could do there was just pot it, send it up. You felt sure it'd be on some colour. Both players probably won't be too disappointed. At the match is going to stop after this frame, gives them time to regroup, rest, regroup, and come back out for this evening. Just gone a little bit ragged. Yes, that final session due to get underway in just over two hours. Trump didn't want the cannon on the brown. Six. These kind of frames can be quite mentally draining, gives up a lot of energy and thought and concentration. I said they'd be glad of a couple of hours rest. Judge Trump, six. The session started very differently, of course. Judge Trump dominated the first frame with two good breaks. And Ali Carter responded with a century. But from the moment that Carter missed a red on a break of 50 in the third frame, things have become a lot more challenging. Balls have been awkward at times. No fluency from either player, really. Very little in the way of sizable breaks. It's been a battle. Both are well used to playing in matches like this where things don't quite go as you'd like them to. And you've got to dig deep. Nicely done. So Ali Carter creates a chance for himself in his bid to win four frames in a row, just as he did against Stuart Bingham earlier in the week from the brink of defeat. win like that over Stewart, 4-1 down, can just add to your belief that maybe it is your week. Usually when a player wins a term, there's usually at least one match they could and should have been knocked out. <laughs> Rather typical of the session. Certainly. Everything has been akin to Walking through treacle, nothing has come easy since the end of frame two. Yeah, from one all, any time you looked, either player was going to start getting into a bit of a flow or rhythm. Something careless or unfortunate has happened.
Carter still trying to absorb what's <laughs> just happened to him, having got in nicely with that good opening red. Chance to build at the very least a lead in this frame, if not a frame and session clinching one. Now it's back to the drawing board. Yeah, might be tempted by this red. He's rattled it in with a bit of safety in mind, taking the cue ball back up the table. But he's kept the break going. Yeah, it didn't look to be very accurate. I thought it was actually going to catch enough of the jaw and stay out. I said just the fact that the cloth is quite new. That would have helped. I think the cloth is more worn. That wouldn't have went in. And there's probably a slight element of frustration in deciding to play that shot. I was very reluctant to leave the table after having such a good chance. And similar scenario again. Land a bit awkward. It might be seduced into going for another red. Not just potted, but no guarantee of getting on a colour either. Might feel him playing it that he's going to hit another ball. Yeah, and that's why he didn't go for in the end. Again, correct choice. Alicada, 18. Yeah, Carter looking a bit frustrated, but. I think the bigger picture here for him is that he's right back in this match when it might have got away from him as Trump misses the thin edge on the red. And even if he were to lose this frame, 5-4 would be by no means a calamity from 4-1 down. Well, that changes things with Trump missing the thin edge twice because he can see this red full ball. So he's going to be warned that if he misses again, he'll lose the frame. The last time ranking event snooker was played in China, the 2019 World Open, which Judd Trump won against Tepchire and Nu. Tepchire gave up a frame in those circumstances. Yeah, he's just getting the warning there. Bit of pressure on this. Confirmation from Cheng Wei Li that Trump has to hit one. So a different shot coming up here from the first two. I played the thicker contact, which obviously ruled out the risk of missing it altogether again. And played it well, to be fair. And good response from Ali. He's just a tough, hard match player, Ali. Prepared to go toe to toe. Ali got a four. 
the third time that Trump has tried and failed to catch the paint of the red. Yeah, it's always much better to give four points away rather than catch it too thick and leave your opponent in. Probably play the same shot again. Or try to. Couldn't have got any closer to dropping. Yeah, but the point is no good. Yeah, point no good. You, you cut her, you have a 26. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think they're just querying whether the scoreboard is correct in the arena. Yeah, I think in the arena scoreboard shown that Ali only had 26 points and the last foul from Judd didn't go on. Yeah, the on-screen graphic is correct. Yeah, he's left this red for Ali to pot and swing around around the back of the black, back up the ball count. So this final frame of the session, following the pattern of the session itself. Tough, uncompromising snooker. To determine who's going to have a narrow advantage going into this evening's final session, which is due to get underway in less than two hours' time.
Tá, ele é isso. Aí cai do fogo. Well, he has slight control of the frame here. Still feels not too difficult for Judd to be playing safety. Again, this frame and a few others, certainly not what we would have expected from these two players, particularly at the start of the match. Once again, the ball's awkward. The black's surrounded. Red's accumulating near the top end of the table. Top cushion. And even if you're an attacking positive player, a lot of the times you still can be very much dictated by where the balls are. And Ali has left a red. Joe, so that you can pot and get back up the table. Try and break the stalemate. Another 30 minute frame. Scores level could not be tighter. Four each, 34 points each. Tricky all the time, but again, reestablished in control of the frame. Ali Carter again, just clarifying that scoreboard in the arena is correct. No, I, I it 48. Should be 18, 48. Yeah, 18 in it. You you said before. That's better again for Ali. Carter saying he thinks there should be 18 between them rather than 14. Yeah. You, you're 48. Yeah. You, you, yeah. I'm 30, I think. No, 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 you're 34. No, I think 34 is correct. 34, yeah. Hard to do the maths after a session this grueling. <laughs> to prefer to Ali was doing some points. And it's an excellent shot there. Play deliberately double kiss that red. Bring the white back up the table. He never guaranteed exactly where the red's gonna go, but well thought out and well executed shot.
And as a result of playing these longer scrubs, if and when you do get a chance, it is harder to take them, be more clinical. As I said before, I think both players will be glad get this frame done, rest up and regroup for tonight. Yeah, so that rest time is getting ever narrower. An hour and three quarters away now from the resumption. Yeah, ideally, if you had enough time, you'd like to go back to the hotel. That's not available, then you're, it's never as nice if you're kind of just hanging around the venue. Might be harder to get something to eat there. But again, that will apply for both players. This time it's Judd Trump who's played a telling safety. Carter in trouble behind the brown. Again, that was the significance. Not just could have left Judd a pot. But able to play a snooker as well. Massive piece of luck. Their World Championship meeting back in 2012 also went the distance. And in that match, Trump was three in front. With just four to play on that occasion. And Carter had the final word. We're still a long way from the winning line in this match. A very long way. 10 being the target for victory. It would be especially frustrating for Trump, though, to emerge from this session behind, given he was 4-1 to the good and Carter was struggling, feeling frustrated with the way things were going. So Trump will feel the bare minimum is a 5-4 advantage. Yeah, he's looking to come off the cushion to play the red closest, but playing that very hard to judge. Feels inevitable that he pushed the red on. Technically very correct. And that's got to help when you're under pressure looking to pot a dead straight one like that from distance. It's been a very... And he's got every chance now. Just seven points behind, Six. 43 left. Everything is there for him. Yeah, you can see he's given every shot his full attention. He'd be delighted if he could take a lead here. Seven. And he's shown great character. He's come back from 4-1 when he wasn't playing at his best. Plus other little things weren't going his way. They're the kind of things in the past he has reacted to. It hasn't been easy, but he has managed to accept them, refocus. 14. Needs to work the cue ball here. Fifteen. Yeah, he's played it well. Yeah, lovely trace of left hand side there just to bring it out to the black. Again, he's got a lovely cue action. Not only is it straight, but also a real smooth delivery of the cue. Never looks like he's forcing anything. And it's held up just in time. So yeah. a great opportunity now for Carter. 
Yeah, play that lovely as well. Bottom left-hand side. So as I hit the cushion, I ran towards the yellow. And again, didn't hit it overly hard. Smooth cueing it and let that bit of side do the work. 24. Great performance from Ali so far. 11 the lead, so he's going to need green, brown and blue to emerge with the session advantage. He's been rewarded for his usual tenacity and a good deal of patience in this session. Fascinating, it's been gruelling, it's been tough as nails. We had a century from Carter in the second frame. Since then, it's been a battle. So Ali Carter, 5-4 up at the midway point, but an awful lot of snooker still to come. A possible 10 frames, and I don't think it would be a surprise to anyone if all 10 are required between these two warriors on the green base. Ali Carter will certainly feel the happier with the scoreline, given that he was 4-1 behind.